Hello there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a horizontal scroll with this sleek scroll bar that changes color as you progress. And I'm going to be using Bricks Builder and Motion Page. Of course, this can be done with any builder because Motion Page is compatible with a lot of builders like Oxygen, Elementor, Beaver Builder, Zion, and Bricks Builder and Gutenberg. But then I'm going to be using Bricks Builder to do this. In setting this up, the most important thing is the structure of your element. So right here, I have five section and out of this five section, I want to use this three section for the horizontal scroll. So what I'm going to do is I want to quickly point out that I got this template from the Bricks community from Mohammed Mustafa. So shout out to Mohammed for providing this uh, template. So I've gone ahead to modify this template to suit what I want. So what I've done is that I've made all my section a uh, full screen height that is 100 VH. And if you take a look at the original design, you'll see that this looks good when the section is full height. And uh, yeah, so um, perhaps it could work if the section is not full height. I mean, it just depends on the test and what you're trying, the look you're trying to achieve. So let's go back into Bricks Builder. To set this up, I have determined that these are the three sections that I want to use for my horizontal scroll. So what I'm going to do is to go ahead and place these three sections inside a single div. But I want to use a block because blocks are typically full width by default. So I'm going to wrap that with a block and then I'm going to move these other two inside that same block. Now I'm going to just rename this. I'm going to call this a uh, horizontal scroll. I'm just going to call that H scroll to make things short. And then I'm going to wrap that in a div this time around. And the reason I'm wrapping it with a div is because a div will typically assume the width of its content. So I'm going to go here and wrap it with a div. And let me collapse that. I'm going to call this H scroll trigger. And then I'm just going to go ahead and give it the same class. I want to call it G sub H scroll trigger. So I've given that. And then for this, I'm going to give it a class of G sub H scroll. So this will be a horizontal scroll and this will be the trigger. The next thing I'm going to do is to select this horizontal scroll. And then you can see it has these three sections. So the first, this is the first section, the second and the third section. Let me expand that. So you have this section, this section and this section. So I'm going to go ahead and stack it horizontally. So I'm going to stack it horizontally. And then if you scroll, you notice that you're only seeing this one, that these other two are still there. So I'm going to save this and preview on the front end and see how it looks. So I'm going to refresh this. Okay, Bricks refreshes automatically. So you can see that uh, this is the section that stacks um, horizontally. Now, if you notice um, that we have a horizontal scroll bar here, okay, and yeah, so we have a horizontal uh, a scroll bar here that shows us uh, that this is stacked horizontally. You can see it's pushing our site, um, you know, in a very awkward way. So then another thing you're going to notice is that this is not taking up the full 100% width. Each of them is not taking up the 100% width. So what I'm going to do is to come in here. Now this is a section and section typically takes the full width of the screen. But in this case, you can see that it is shrinking. And that is because by default, Bricks sets a flex shrink of one to the section. So I'm going to go ahead and change that flex shrink to zero for each of those three sections. And then another thing you notice is that this one uh, has fewer content. Therefore, it is not stretched all the way to the end here. So I'm going to go back and select the parent container and set the axis aligned to stretch. I will save that again and then we'll take a look at the front end. So now you can see that it takes the full width and everything stretches. So now we are ready, but we don't want this horizontal scroll bar here because it doesn't look okay. As you can see, it just, you know, just doesn't look okay. So I'm going to go back in here, make sure that you are still selecting that horizontal scroll, go into layout and then go into overflow and type hidden. So you set the overflow to hidden. I'm going to save that again. And let's take a look at the front end and see if that is resolved. Let's take a look. So you can not see that horizontal scroll bar anymore. But the only section you can see is the first one and the other ones are hidden away towards the right hand side. All right, let's go back in. Next thing, I'm going to add a div and that div is going to be my progress bar. So I'm just going to write progress. And then I'm going to give it a class of GSAP progress bar. Next thing, go to layout, go to position and set the position to absolute. 
I'm going to set the top to zero and the right to zero. Now we can see it. So I want to see it. So I'm going to give it a height of 50 pixel and a width of, let's say, 100 pixel. And then I'm going to give it a background just uh, to see it of, say, purple up. Now it's not showing. Um, that is because it's absolutely positioned and all the elements, I'm using Bricks 1.5 and all the elements are set to display relative, by default, relatively positioned elements have a higher stacking context. So they are going to cover any element that is positioned absolute. So I'm going to go into the Z index and set the Z index to 1. And you can see this shows up. And of course, this is not supposed to be on the right. This is supposed to be on the left. Now, if you're watching this from the future, Bricks would have removed position relative as the default for all containers. So that means you will have to go to this edge scroll and make sure that you set the position to relative. And that will enable this progress bar to be absolutely positioned relative to this edge scroll. Now, I'm going to go back to the scroll bar and then and then I make sure that class is selected and I want to give it a width of 100% and I want to give it a height of say 30 pixels. But of course it's not going to reflect here because Bricks forces a certain minimum height inside the builder for empty containers. So I'm just going to give it a minimum height of zero. That will ensure that a height of 30 is visible. I'm going to go to the background color. Let me collapse this. Now the first section is kind of like light orange or cream. So I want to set this background to something like this. That will be our initial background or perhaps I could set it. Yeah, that looks better. So that will be our initial background. One more thing, I made a mistake here. So for this H row, we're not going to set that overflow hidden here because it's not going to allow that horizontal scroll to work. Rather, we need this H row to be the width of all these three. And therefore, we have to set that overflow to the parent instead. So I'm going to go here and set that overflow there rather. And let's say if you take a look at the front end, you'll see that we still have the same result with no horizontal scroll bars. Now it's time to go to motion page and start setting up the animation. I'm going to go to the back end and launch motion page. Let's create a new timeline. And then I'm going to rename that timeline to horizontal scroll. It doesn't matter what you call it as long as you remember, but always a good idea to give it a name that makes sense. Now we want to assign this timeline to a page. Now let's go back and take a look at the title of our page is horizontal scroll tutorial. So I'm going to go back to motion page and choose horizontal scroll tutorial because that is where we want to apply this timeline to. Let's go ahead and choose scroll trigger and then we're going to lock to scroll bar and then we're going to pin element. Over here, you have the input for the trigger selector. So what is going to trigger this animation is going to be the parent, which is this parent. And then we're going to choose this selector scanner to scan and see if we can choose it. Anyway, sometimes when element overlap, it's always usually difficult to get the real one you're looking for. So right here, we have this one, which is this, but we can't locate this. So we're going to manually just, so I'm just going to copy this trigger class and I'm going to paste it here. Remember to put the dot and then I'm going to copy that and put it here. So the elements with this class is going to act as a scroll trigger. By default, the display scroller markers are usually on, which shows the start position and the end position of the trigger element. Now, in this case, we want our trigger element to start at the very top and then we're going to set the start position to zero and we want it to end when the trigger elements scroll 100% viewport height away from the viewport. So we're going to give it a negative 100% value. And over here, we have the input for the animation target, which is the element you want to animate. I'm going to use the selector scanner and then I should easily find that GSAP H scroll, which is the same class we gave this. So you always have to make sure that it's that class or the ID. Next thing to do is to set the animation property. So what we want to animate is the translate X property and we want to translate it to from its current state. So I'm going to go to the translate and in this case, I want to put negative 100. So you can see that it translates negative 100. So let's see if I come here and scroll, it translate negative 100 and then scrolls. But we want it to scroll horizontally until all the three sections are visible. Right now, it's only the first and the second one that are visible. So if negative 100 is going to make the second one visible, that means negative 200 is going to make the third one visible. So if I scroll it, you can see that the third one is visible. 
So I'm going to save this animation and then we're going to take a look at the front end. So right now, before I refresh this, you see everything is just, you know, normal. But then when I refresh it, and then we try that, you can see that it translates in the X 200%. And once it is done, it moves on. Now, the next thing we're going to do is to take a look at how to implement the scroll bar. Let's go back to motion page. So let's see. All right. So that is the scroll bar. Before we move on to the next stage, I just want to let you know that I have a handy affiliate link in the description below. If you want to use motion page, please use my affiliate link. That way I get a small commission at no extra cost to you. And it's a way of supporting the channel. So I'm going to basically duplicate this timeline because we want to use the same scroll trigger for it. So I'm going to go here and then I'm going to click here to duplicate this timeline and you can see that it just duplicated. So I'm going to call it horizontal scroll progress bar. But now we're going to change the animation target. So I'm just going to click here to remove that. And then I'm going to use that scanner to scan this and we have a progress bar. So I'm just going to select it. But in this case, I don't want it to move. I don't want it to translate negative 200. For the progress bar, we're going to be animating the scale property. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. I'm going to go to the from tab and then go to the scale. Then I'm going to click here to separate the scale properties. And I want it to scale from zero. I want it to scale two. So we're going to select. So let it scale to three times its own width. So I'm going to put three there. Now you can see that it scales. But the problem is it's scaling. It seems that the height is scaling also. So I'm going to separate this and put this three, make sure that it is only the X. So we have just the X. So it's scaling horizontally. So you can see that it's scaling horizontally now. So always make sure that you separate the two values, the X and the Y, so that you can apply only to the X. Now, uh, the scaling doesn't look quite well because it's starting from the middle. So we need to change the transform origin to the left. So I'm gonna go here. Under custom, I'm just gonna choose transform origin and then I'm going to put the left so now you see it transforms from the left as you can see that it transforms on the X scale three times its own width so its original width was the same width as the section but we needed to go three times that which covers the three sections the next thing we're going to do is to animate the color to do that we're going to add a different animation node so I'm going to click here to add an animation node and then I want a time just when this is about to finish animating, just about there. I'm going to se still select that. And then I'm going to make sure that this is selected. What we're going to animate is the background color in this case. So I'm going to go to the two tab because we want to animate two. And then we have this purple here. So we want to animate it to a background color of purple. So I'm just going to uh, just eyeball it you can decide to choose your own color, make it, you know, exactly the shape that you want. So let's scroll. So you can see that it scroll to purple, but it's, it takes a long time for it to finish scrolling. We don't want it to scroll all the way. So we want it by the time it gets here, it's already purple. So I'm just going to move this, come here and just reduce this to like two seconds. So you can see that by the time we are here, it's already done with purple. And once it's just about there, we want to add a new node. And then we're still going to select that progress bar as the target. And we're going to animate the background still. So we go to the tool tab and then we go to the background. And then we're going to choose that orange color again. So right here, I want to choose an orange color. And let's see. So it comes here and by the time it enters here, it animates to the orange color. So we're going to just move this right where the animation ends here. So let's see. So beginning from the top, it moves, then there changes to the purple. And then once it enters there, it changes to the orange. You can feel free to adjust this the way you want. And that should be all that we wanted to do so let's just save this and take a look at the front end let's refresh this all right so so that animates and the progress bar moves and once it's done we scroll up and then the same thing in reverse the good thing about this is even if you're using the keyboard page down 
it will still work and even if you're using the down arrow it's still going to work so you can see that this works even if you're using the scroll bar it's still gonna work one thing you cannot do though is to link these other sections as anchor sections well to do that will require a whole different setup and that is beyond the scope of this tutorial if you like this tutorial i have more tutorials on motion page please check it out right here and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't hit the notification bell so you don't miss more tutorials like this until next time have a great day